Hi there, I'm KJ. Welcome to KJ Paints. I'm doing another stencil pour today. Um, something a little bit different though. I am still going to transfer this stencil image that I created onto my kitchen shelf liner with the adhesive backing. Um, so I'm going to do that and then I'm going to apply it to my canvas and then I will be right back. So here we are. We've attached, or I've attached the, um, the, the sticky side of the kitchen shelf liner to my canvas after painting a black background. This is a multi, multi-used can or multiple. <laughs> this is a camera a canvas I've used multiple times, but so it's quite thick with paint on it, but it's still functional. So it's good for an experiment. So what I'm doing here is I am just adding some, um, additional paint all along the edges of my stencil using the same color as my background. So if there's any bleed through, you won't be able to tell. And what that's going to do is create a skin between the paint on the canvas and the paint on top of the stencil, which will prevent um, paint from leaking under and messing up my stencil design once I do my put once I do my pour. So I'll just go all the way along the edges. Don't be shy. Use lots, lots of paint. Um, the thicker the paint, the thicker the skin, just like when you're um, doing an acrylic pour and you have a skin left over. It's basically the same idea. You're just using that skin to waterproof or paint proof your painting <laughs> or your canvas. So I'll go ahead and finish up that and then I'll come back uh, to do the pour. So here we go. Um, so my paint is dry. I'm back. I've got my paints mixed up. Um, my paints are going to be um, Liquitex Basics Deep Violet. I've got uh, Artist Loft Silver. And then I've got Windsor Newton Cobalt Blue Hue and Windsor Newton Windsor Blue. Um, the Windsor, the Cobalt Blue has a bit of other colors mixed into it, a bit of white and a bit of green, just to lighten it up a little bit. Um, so it's a little bit more differentiated from the Windsor Blue because after I mixed them, I realized they're actually pretty similar. And once they mix with white, that Windsor Blue will be, look even a little bit lighter. So my, this is gonna be a Dutch pour style painting, um, or at least technique. Um, and then I'm, so I'm using white as my base coat. So I'm going to start pouring that on. My white is just a simply acrylic from Walmart. Um, and all of my paints are mixed with Floetrol and water and, um, and they're mixed very thin for the Dutch pour consistency. So you want them quite thin so that you can uh, move the paint easily. Um, the, uh, the, the thinness of it also gives that, that nice lacing and styled effect that that Dutch pour got, gives. It's kind of famous for. Um, don't be afraid to put lots of paint on your, on your canvas when you're doing a Dutch pour. That is regularly my downfall with trying to get a Dutch pour to work is if I don't put enough, especially of the negative space or background paint on the canvas, and then there's nothing for the colored the color paint to move into. So, um, I am being quite generous. I'm not painting the whole horse because most of my colors are going to be in that bottom or that neck of the corner. It's your upper right, but for me, it's the bottom left. Um, so all my dark colors are going to be there and then I'm going to blow out and down, up, out towards the ears and then down towards the muzzle. I've got all my white down. I'm just going to tilt it around to even it out a little bit. And then I'm going to lay down my colors. So I started with the purple, um, to, because I have most of it, uh, or, uh, I started with the purple because I have a higher quantity of it, then my uh, lighter mixed blue and my Windsor blue, then my silver is on top um, because as always my silver likes to disappear. Um, so trying to give it its best shot to show up by putting it on top. Um, even though it does disappear a lot, I still use it because it does give even non-metallic colors this really gorgeous shimmer. So even if it's not, you know, being loud and proud, at least it's still having a lovely effect on my painting. So I'm pouring just a little bit more of the white paint um, along the edge of my colors to give them some more fluidity to move into. And then I'm gonna take my torch and I'm gonna pop air bubbles first before I blow out. So I do that because um, if you don't, I, my, I find that after you blow out and then start to torch, you get all these air bubbles that bring your white base paint up. So you get these little pin pins pin drops, pin, just little tiny dots of white showing up in your painting, which can be quite nice, but it's not always the effect that you want. So for, in that case, I always like to do a little torch first 
um, to try to cut that down on that. You're always, of course, going to have to torch afterwards anyway because you're going to be introducing air whenever you're moving your paint and especially from the blow dryer. But I find it does help if you uh, do a little torch for, yeah, a little torch first. So blow my paint out as much as I'm going to with the blow dryer. You can see how easy it was to move the paint. And now I'm just going to do the finishing touches by mouth. Um, using the mouth, it does tend to give you a little bit more control. Um, but I do find that if you're if you're doing a Dutch pour on any size painting beyond like a four by four or like a six by six, using the mouth alone and not using a blow dryer is going to give you these really sort of narrow bands of movement. I don't know if that's the best way to explain it, but basically you, if, if you're going for sort of a flower effect, it can be quite nice. But if you want that sort of, um, if you want sort of broader strokes, I don't know how to exactly explain it, but basically it just gives it a, a larger, um, appearance when it, I, I can't explain it, but it, I, th I think it looks nicer on a bigger canvas if you use the blow dryer largely and then just use your mouth to blow out sections that you're not happy with. So I'm just torching here to finish it off. A couple more blowouts, just a couple of spots I wasn't happy with. Um, and then I will call it done. I'm going to let it dry pretty thoroughly. It took about a day and a half to dry. Um, paint, my paintings tend to dry fairly quickly. It's probably just the area that I live. Um, yeah, so I'll let that dry and then I'll come back and, um, show you the next step. So here we are with the dry painting and it is ready to have the stencil pulled off. Originally, I was going to stencil the other um, markings on um, before removing this, and I was going to, it was going to be great. I was going to use more of this, the kitchen shelf liner, but I just found that, um, I don't know if it was the number of times I had to transfer the image, um, but the proportions got thrown off. So I wasn't able to get a good fit with my shelf liner on the other sections. So I ended up just taking this off and then I used the, um, use the shelf liner, like the other section of the stencil to just use it as a guide. And, um, I drew my lines on with a water, uh, just a washable marker. I used the, a washable marker to draw on my lines and then I painted over those. And then you can just wash the marker off when you're done. So for this part, um, parts of it you can just pull as you can see here but I do like to keep a sharp blade in hand um, just to, to cut along there where it might be a little thicker on the, like where the paint skin might be a little bit thicker where if you just pulled it might pull up more than you want it to more than just the um, outside of the stencil so I keep my blade on hand and I use it here and there and I just kind of pick away at it sometimes I use scissors to help me cut out a section so, so that I get a better angle on it so this part is really nerve wracking, but also really um, satisfying because it's nerve wracking because you don't know what it's going to look like under and I'm worried about paint um, sneaking under the my stencil. But once it pulls off and you get these beautiful crisp lines, it's very satisfying. <laughs> so I'll just finish. I'll just speed this up and finish that and then I will take you to the next step. So here we are with the next step. Um, so I've drawn my lines on using the, the back sheet of the stencil. Um, and then I'm going to just paint on my additional lines with gold, my deco art, uh, dazzling metallic splendid gold, um, and a thin pink brush. And I'm just, I'm going to do one coat, which unfortunately it does mix a bit with the black washable marker, but, um, I'm thinking that if I had let the mar marker dry a little bit more, it might not have done that so much. Um, and, and secondarily, um, if you use chalk or something like that, it might have a different effect. Um, it does mix a little bit, but then once um, I do it second and third coat, it's not as visible. So I think it works out in the end. So I do one coat, then wash off the marker that can be washed off with just a paper towel and water, and then um, go on to do the next couple of coats. So I will speed this up so that you can see how it comes along. Um, and then uh, I will take you to the finished painting. Oh, uh, one more thing. The poured paint gives a sort of ridge along the outside 
um, where the poured paint ends and the background paint starts, which makes it really easy to paint along the edges to clean up any places where I got gold overflow um, or just messy paint. Like if you do have a leak, you can very easily cut, fix it with, with a bit of your background paint. So I will do that as my last step and then I will bring you back to um, the finished painting. And here we go, the final product. And I think it turned out really beautiful. It didn't go quite as I had hoped it would in the sense of the um, stencil not working out for the gold sections, but um, I think it turned out really beautiful. So thanks again for watching. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Let me know in the comments if you want to see me do another stencil type painting or with different colors or a different animal or whatever. Um, thanks for watching, bye.